Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we are talking fear. We're going to give you five of the most common fears about RV travel and how you might address them. So this video really goes out to those of you who are relative newcomers to RV travel or those of you who are thinking about getting into the RV lifestyle. Fear. Number one, fear of mechanical breakdown. This is a well-founded fear, as it turns out. <laughs> One you need to overcome because it's going to happen eventually. We have been traveling with our RV rig for 15 years or so now, and we've experienced probably just about every kind of mechanical <laughs> breakdown that you can imagine. And some that you didn't even know were possible. <laughs> Air conditioners, water pumps, diesel engines. Axles, blown engines. So first of all, I have to admit, this is a well-founded fear. And this applies to anything in life that is mechanical. The more complicated it is, the more opportunity there is for it to break down. So how do you address the fear of mechanical breakdowns? Well, first, obviously, is to make sure that your equipment is in good running order. Yeah, doing a you know pre-check before all trips Making sure that your rig is properly maintained and has been looked over by a professional is always helpful, especially when you're new and you don't really know what you're looking for sometimes. <laughs> As you know, we like to go on these really long-term extended RV adventures across the country. But first, we always take a little shakedown cruise to check our rig top to bottom and make sure that everything is in good working order. Yeah, I think a lot of the fears that we're going to talk about today can really be tackled by camping close to home for a few trips to sort of get yourself comfortable with your rig. And something else to remember about an RV, I mean, you know, you can pull over to the side of the road. You can stop in a parking lot, you know, if something seems to be amiss. It's not like you're on a boat and you, you know, you're not in the middle of the ocean where there's nowhere to go. You know? Your RV is probably not going to sink. No. There's one fear you don't have to worry about. You're not going to drown in your RV. I mean, in addition <laughs> to obviously making sure everything's in good working order, you can carry roadside assistance that would help you out in case of any breakdown. Down. Always double check your tires because on any kind of extended RV trip, if you're going to have an issue, quite often it might end up being tire related. Yeah, um, not just the tread on your tires, but the life of your tires because as tires age, they get more brittle and more likely to blow. So sometimes people buy RVs that have been sitting for a long time and you think, oh, this is a brand new RV, but it's been sitting on a dealer's lot for a couple of years and who knows how old those tires are. So check the date. And as many of you know, we upgraded our trailer tires to light truck tires, which is maybe slightly controversial, but ever since we did that, we have not suffered any worries about our tires. Yeah, and Airstream so. actually offers that as an option now directly from the factory, so I think they've seen the value in it as well. And one final unconventional tip I'm going to give you to address the fear of mechanical breakdown is live beneath your means. And I know it's easy to say and it's hard to do, because we're all stretched financially in many directions. But if you live just slightly beneath your means, then if you ever do get thrown a curveball of a mechanical breakdown, mm -hmm. you've got a little bit of extra money in your pocket to take care of it. Yeah, and I would say factor that in when you're looking to purchase an RV. Yes. Don't go to the top of your budget, like leave some wiggle room there for extra cash to stow away because you're going to need to fix something eventually. And with all that said, <laughs> to additionally address this fear. Bear in mind, there have been many, many seasons when we've taken our entire rig out. And we've gone back and forth across North America and we haven't had a single serious mechanical problem. So <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> uh, often because we make internet videos, we document every problem that we have. So someone watching our channel might see these problems and just think, oh no, you know, what are we getting into? Yeah. But in reality, We've had many, many times when things have gone just perfectly well, but that doesn't make for quite as interesting a video, does it? And you need to know that it's not always perfect, so you do have to prepare for those times when it's not. All right, the second major fear of RV travelers is the fear of accidents, having some sort of accident while you're out there on the road. A very large male deer jumped out on the road right in front of us. Thank God we were in this truck because if we had been in a passenger like sedan, we would probably be dead right now. And 
I would say this could be both accidents with regards to traveling with your rig Mm -hmm. and also maybe even personal accidents, physical (laughs) accidents to yourself. As we have experienced as well. Yeah, I guess we've especially experienced the latter. I broke my foot one time. Uh, Christy had a bad ear infection, which is not exactly an accident, but it is a serious matter. It's hard when you're away from home and you have to find, you know, at your nose and throat doctor and go to the hospital and things like that. So I think the the biggest thing you can do to, to plan for the personal accidents is to call your insurance company and make sure that it covers you outside of your home state. Because we've heard from some people that they go on a trip and something happens, like somebody falls and breaks a leg or something, and they find out their insurance doesn't cover them when they leave the state that they live in. So that's a big problem. So make sure you're covered outside your state. If you're not, I think you usually can add like a rider onto your policy to cover you outside the state so just be prepared in that aspect of things and then two I would say have good roadside assistance (laughs) in case you do have an accident you're not stuck and stranded make sure you've got coverage for towing your RV far enough to get you to where you need to go. Be familiar with your RV rig. Those of you who are new to traveling with your RV, again, it goes back to the shakedown cruise. Maybe take it to a big empty parking lot Mm -hmm. sometime and become more familiar with the way it handles and with parking it. If you have a long trailer, I would make sure you're familiar with the tail swing of your trailer because we hear a lot of people that have accidents in that regard after they get like a 32 foot travel trailer. And they forget that it swings really wide when they make a curve and um, they take out a gas pump or, you know, another vehicle or whatever. The other thing I would say to this is when you're planning a trip, look at your map and figure out what cities you're going to be going through and avoid traveling in big cities during rush hour. That will save you so much stress and I think really decrease your chance of having an accident. Also, make sure that you give yourself enough time to get where you're going. When you're in a rush is when you're much more likely to make mistakes. You're going to change lanes without looking properly. You're going to almost miss an exit and pull over in front of somebody. You know, things like that happen. So I think giving yourself extra time to get where you're going will lessen the chance of you getting in a rush and having an accident just from a simple mistake. Don't travel when you're really tired because driving when you're tired can end up leading to an accident remember you're towing a bed (laughs) you know there have been many times if we've been (laughs) towing and i have felt tired of driving or vice versa we will just pull over and rest for a couple of hours that's the beauty of rv travel and along those lines you might even consider the highways that you take driving on the big interstates even though it technically can be faster is also more stressful. I think the the accidents that happen on interstates can be yeah. uh, even more dramatic. Like more people impactful. traveling at higher speeds and just, you know, having a blowout at 50 miles an hour on a small highway is much different than having a blowout on the interstate doing 70. So we've done plenty of interstate travel, but there have been times when we have purposefully gone off the interstates onto smaller highways, even knowing that it might be a slower route uh, because the highways can be more enjoyable. So just Mm -hmm. take that into consideration when you're planning your trip. (laughs) The next major fear of prospective RV travelers is the fear of getting lost and or getting into a bad tow situation. Because a lot of these RV rigs are so long that maneuvering them and turning them around is not easy. Those of us who tow longer fifth wheels, travel trailers, or have the really big motorhomes, one of our great fears is just getting into a situation uh, that's hard to get out of. So one way you can obviously avoid getting those situations to look at Google Maps. I go to the satellite view. We do that quite frequently. If we're, for example, going to stop in a town and visit a certain restaurant, we love to go to local restaurants Mm -hmm. in different communities when we're traveling around the country. We will usually pull it up on satellite view using Google Maps so we know in advance where a good parking area might be, whether it's a one-way road or whether there's an outlet somewhere. Uh, That can be very helpful. Today, We have parked in this rather awkward parking spot in Las Cruces, New Mexico, in order to visit a local institution. Andale, andale. That's where we're going, andale. 
don't rely on just one GPS. We hear from a lot of people, oh, I don't buy a GPS or I don't use my car GPS because I've got a GPS on my phone. Well, that's great if you have cell service. <laughs> and there are a lot of places that you're going to want to take your RV where you're not going to have good cell service. So you can't rely on that GPS on your cell phone. The other thing I would say is different GPSs can lead you different ways and give you different information. So we like to use our Garmin RV GPS that's mounted in our truck. And then we usually compare that to Google Maps or our Apple Maps on our phone. And Waze. And Waze is another other app that shows you traffic. Waze is very helpful in going through large metropolitan areas because it can tell you if there's like a traffic jam or there's an accident. So it can kind of help you avoid getting in situations where you're going to be stuck for hours at a time or somewhere where you can't get out of a situation, you know, where you're, you're stuck on some highway where there's a bad accident and there's no exit anywhere nearby. Along these lines, those of us with the longer RV rigs even have to think about refueling and yeah. where we refuel. A couple of tips. One is obviously to look for truck stops and those fuel stations that cater to big rigs. Yeah. Uh, but secondly is to top off your fuel whenever you get a chance. And sometimes we will do that even after hours if there's not a lot of traffic around. Like if you're ever moving your RV rig, which we often do in sort of off time hours, we will scoot into a fuel station and fill up our tank when it's not so busy. Because a lot of times the stress comes when you're navigating in an unfamiliar space and there's a lot of traffic around. Yeah, because a lot of times if you're in smaller gas stations that aren't like truck stop type of gas stations, there are a lot of cars just kind of whipping in and out. And I think a lot of them think you can see them when a lot of times you can't see them when they're driving around behind you or something like that. The next major fear of RV travelers goes to the RV lifestyle and living in an RV, and that's fear of not having enough space, not enough elbow room, feeling crowded. We did a whole video on this. Yes, we have. How to survive in an RV with your spouse, because we get a lot of questions about that. And that's true of a, a lot of these fears. We will have more detailed videos about each topic if you dig into our library. Hint, hint. I found that after spending a week or so in the RV, it becomes the new normal, and it actually, in general, feels pretty comfortable, and you don't really feel uh, as claustrophobic as you might think. Now, I'm a pretty tall guy, pretty big guy, and we don't have some huge RV space, and I still, in general, feel very comfortable for long periods of time. I think the important thing to remember about an RV is that most of the time you're taking it to destinations where you're going to want to be outside. Unless you just happen to run into some really terrible weather that's going to keep you cooped up inside, for the most part, during the day, you're going to be out and about doing a hike or doing a scenic drive or something like that, you know, visiting a town or seeing a site of some sort. Um, so, you know, you're really only there in the evenings and then to sleep. So if you use it like that, I think you're much less likely to get claustrophobic. We did have a year that we took our Airstream <laughs> to Maine and it rained and it rained and it rained. And, you know, we got out and did a lot of things despite the rain, but still that that's when you start to feel a little claustrophobic and it's more weather related than anything. You know, we do carry a little portable living room with us, a couple of uh, inflatable ottomans and some chairs, of course, and a little mat. And setting that stuff up outside makes for a more pleasant living area and living space. That kind of gives you nature as your living room. Yeah. And so you don't really feel like you're cramped inside the RV. Here we have that's one me. standard issue American wife. Standard issue? No, that's the upgrade, not standard issue. <laughs> Another point that I like to harp on is don't overpack. It's very easy to make the mistake, and we have made it many times ourselves, of trying to pack everything in the kitchen sink into the RV. And what happens is you end up with a lot of clutter. And every time you open a cabinet or even you try to navigate through the RV living space, it's too crowded because you got too much junk filling up right. all your space. So, you know, pack what you need and leave home what you don't need. Remember that you can wash clothes. Pretty much every private campground is going to have laundry facilities. Most 
National Park campgrounds, with some exceptions, will have laundry um, available. So, you know, wash your clothes. I always laugh because we typically pack all these clothes, and I end up wearing the same stuff every day. (laughs) It's like, oh, this shirt doesn't smell too bad. I think I'll wear it again today. You know, that's the way it goes when you're really living life on the road. The final fear of RV travelers is an interesting one that I do not share, and it is fear of the unknown. You know, in general, I love the unknown. The unknown is what piques my curiosity and gets me out there. But, you know, we've met people who are so fearful about travel, they won't even travel on interstate highways. I mean, there are a lot of people like that in the world. So how do we address the fear of the unknown? Take a deep breath. I don't know. I think that I think it's just a mindset. Like you have to realize that you don't know what tomorrow brings in any situation. So it's no different if you're going to be going to your regular job or if you're going to be going cross country. You know, you, you can't know everything that's going to happen. So I think if you're prepared, you do the research before you get on the road. You you look at your maps. You have a backup paper map. That's another thing I was going to mention earlier. Don't just rely on a digital map. Have a paper map that you can reference should you need it. Know how far you can travel in your RV per day. We always tell people driving an RV is much different than driving a car. Don't expect to hop in your RV and drive for 12 hours. I think if you just plan in advance, then the unknown isn't so scary. And frankly, these days, there's far less that is truly unknown. (laughs) Thanks to the Internet and social media, you have more information at your fingertips than you ever had before. And for many of you, that's probably one reason why you subscribe to our channel and why you like to get online and read about the RV lifestyle and watch videos from lots of different people who have lived the RV lifestyle. If you're really into it, you can learn so much. (laughs) You can learn so much that when you get there, it's almost a little bit of a disappointment because you know everything before you get there. So there's no surprises, you know what I mean? So it's almost like learn enough to, to get yourself there safely, but don't read and look at every single possible thing to do because you want to be surprised a little bit, you know? Yeah, that's just kind of the way we travel. I think, to keep it interesting, you know. The beauty of the Internet and these types of videos is those of you who are doing your homework, doing your research beforehand, can learn about every single aspect of the lifestyle. Like we had uh, one viewer tell us, he told me specifically, he thought we put him about six years ahead of where he would have been. And the beauty of it is we make mistakes and share those mistakes with you so you don't make the same mistakes. So hopefully you have a better experience when you get out there and do it yourself because you've watched our videos on our channel. You know, we show the real deal. We show when you have a tire blowout. We've shown when we've blown an engine, when we all those things that can possibly happen. You know, we've sort of done it all and showed it all. To me, the unknown is what's exciting in life. Yeah. I fear the known, you know, like I, I fear doing the same thing over and over, right. frankly. You fear I'll, no surprises. I mean, yes, I love being surprised. My favorite places I've ever traveled have been places that were surprising to me yeah. and where I, I, you know, I love going. I love going to different countries and going to different cities where I don't even know what currency they're using. You know what I mean? And I have to figure it out. Everything is unknown. That is stimulating and challenging. And RV travel can be that for you, especially if you didn't grow up doing it, if you're just getting into it. So embrace the unknown. Don't be afraid of it. You've got more information now at your fingertips than you've ever had before. Use that information and get out there and make your own memories have your own adventures yeah and if you do have a specific fear of the unknown you know if you look in the right places if you look in our comment section if you look on our facebook group or instagram page you'll probably find somebody who's left a comment or has shared a personal experience that will put that fear of whatever unknown you're thinking about to rest you know Um, and if not ask the question And someone will answer you and, you know, kind of give you their perspective on if they've done X, Y, or Z before, and here's what you shouldn't worry about, and maybe here's a couple of things you should worry about, and once you're prepared, 
You'll be fine. Sorry, guys. There you have it. Five major fears of RV travelers and prospective RV travelers. What about you? What are your fears? Uh, is there anything else that we should address here on our channel? If, if there's any topic you would like to see us uh, include in videos, please don't hesitate to post a comment, uh, ask us questions. And if you are an experienced RV traveler, tell us how you tackled these fears. You know, share your wisdom and experience with our community. Yeah, and if you're somebody that's new and you have a fear of something related to RVing that we haven't covered or you haven't seen a video on, leave a comment down below and maybe you will see a future episode of Long Long Honeymoon that will help you tackle that fear. <laughs> that sounds good. Until next time, this has been yet another episode of the Long Longest Running Honeymoon themed RV show on the interwebs. Wait, if you haven't clicked subscribe yet, you need to do it. It's that little bar down below. Click it. Click the bell next to it so you'll get notified every time we post a fresh video. Click like. Share with your friends and family who you think might like this video. And until next time, what do we say? Aloha. This video was brought to you by Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair. Remember, if you're in the market to have your RV coated with the industry's best ceramic glass protective coating, talk to Vinny, talk to Brian. They have opened a new ceramic super center in Tallahassee, Florida to take care of all of you on the East Coast.